So now that we've proved these two results here, we can use those results to derive a similar um, result for division. So this deals with multiplication. Could we find one for division? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at z1 over z2. Okay. So one complex number divided by another. And I'm going to call that new complex number w. So we're going to let z1 over z2 be equal to w. The consequence of that, of course, is that that implies that z1 is equal to w times z2. Okay, so we can rewrite it like that. Okay, so if that is the case, then the length of z1 must be the length of w times z2. Okay, now we know that the length of uh, or the modulus of the product of two complex numbers, we can break it apart using this rule. Okay, so this is the same as the length of w times the length of z2. So, if we divide now by the length of z2, the length of w must be equal to the length of z1 divided by the length of z2. Okay, so what this is then showing you is that um, I can just say that the length of z1 over z2 is the same as doing the length of z1 divided by the length of z2. Okay? And I can prove that result using that result there. Now, what that means, okay, geometrically, okay, is that I'm effectively multiplying my uh, vector by 1 over the length of z2. Okay? So um, if you're thinking about it as a transformation, if you're dividing by z2, you are multiplying it, so using a scale factor of 1 over the modulus of z2. Right, so let's say the modulus of z2 is 2. Then you'd effectively be multiplying your, new ve your vector by half. Okay, it would half the uh, length of it. Now, what about the argument then? Okay, can we use a similar trick to work that out? So, if we refer back up here, okay, remember z1 is equal to w times z2. So, the argument of z1 must be equal to the argument of w times z2. Okay, now from our result here, that argument of wz2 must be the argument of w plus the argument of z2. So if I just subtract the argument of z2 from both sides, that implies that the argument of w must be equal to the argument of z1, take away the argument of z2. So the argument of z1 over z2 must be equal to the argument of z1 take away the argument of z2. Okay, so taking those two results, we've got those for multiplication and then for division, we can say this. Okay, so what it means then geometrically when you're dividing by the complex number here, complex number z2, is you are rotating anti-clockwise by the negative argument of z2, which is effectively the same as rotating clockwise by the argument of z2. So rather than going around that way, we're now actually going around that way. Okay. And so that's how we can derive the similar result for division.